This episode of Fine Scale Modeler's new product rundown features Airfix's Sea Fury, Ryfield's Panther, Hasegawa's Kaga, and some nifty display bases from Squadron Products. This episode of New Product Rundown brought to you by Hobby Zone USA, the source for all your workbench storage needs. Welcome to the New Product Rundown, Fine Scale Modeler's twice monthly review of the latest kits and accessories. I'm Elizabeth Nash. I'm Aaron Skinner. We've got an exciting show for you, starting with Airfix's 148 scale Sea Fury FB11. This is one of my favorite airplanes, so I'm pretty excited to see what Airfix has done. Developed in World War II, the fighter arrived too late to see combat in Europe or the Pacific. But its speed kept it operational for at least a decade after VJ Day, including combat in Korea, Indonesia, Cuba, and Burma. Airfix's fuselage halves are marked with recessed panel lines and rivets. They extend from behind the cowl to the rudder hinge. The cowl comprises a rear ring covering clusters of exhausts, two parts for the main section, and a front lip that wraps the center section with finely molded engine cylinders. Elsewhere inside, cockpit detail includes a tub, control sticks and pedals, instrument panel with decal faces for the molded dials, seat with padding that mounts on a fuselage frame, side structural frames with controls and wires, and a forward firewall. An extra frame forward of the cockpit includes a spar for the wings. The wings can be built folded or extended. The center wing, including the belly, gets the main wheel well with molded structure, several leading edge vents, and the muzzles of the four 20 millimeter cannons. The inner upper wing halves include more fine panel lines and raised bulges for the guns. If you plan to build the wings extended for flight, the kit provides sturdy braces that project deep into both wing sections. To fold the wings, there are sturdy hinges molded onto the internal frames and a separate linkage. Very little modification will be required. The instructions show both ailerons deflected down when the wings are folded. The rudder and elevators are also posable. Only the split flaps are molded in place. Optional parts allow the gear doors to be posed up. To build the aircraft on the ground, the kit includes detailed gear legs and doors. The terrific instructions include two drawings to help align the gear doors and legs. Underwing stores include a choice of two sizes of fuel tanks, two types of bombs, or rockets. A rocket-assisted takeoff system can be mounted under the center line. The canopy can be posed open or closed. Clear wingtip lights are also included. Cartograph decals provide markings for two Sea Furies, a Korean warfighter from number 801 Naval Air Squadron aboard HMS Glory, and an aircraft in the markings of number 802 Squadron as operated by the Royal Naval Historic Flight. A full suite of stencils is included. Looks good in the box and it'll be exciting to see how it goes together. Rife Field busted on the model scene a couple of years ago with two big statements. A Tiger One and an Abrams with full interior detail. Now comes the next tour de force, a 135th scale Panther Osf G, also with interior. Yeah, between March 1944 and the end of World War II, nearly 3,000 Alsg Panthers were built, more than any other variant. Kits with interiors present unique problems, not least of which is how to display all that detail. Rye Field's answer is to provide the upper hull, glasses, and turret parts in clear plastic. These items look terrific, are crystal clear, and for the most part are blemish free. The only ejector pin marks are on the edges of the upper hull. Clear plastic also provides vision blocks and lights. The tan plastic that makes up the remainder of the parts is sharply molded. The lower hull comprises a belly with external and internal detail, a rear panel, and side panels with suspension attachments. The running gear includes inner units that anchor torsion bars with attached road wheel arms made into sharp wheels with bolt detail on inner and outer faces. The drive sprockets have detail on both sides too. Two types of idlers are supplied to differentiate production years. Optional steel road wheels are supplied along with others, but the instructions don't clarify where to use them. The final drives feature internal cogs. Fine pins join the individual track links, a jig aids track assembly. Inside, there's a multi-part assembly that provides a good representation of the Maybach HL210 engine. Plumbing and mechanical details are included. The rest of the engine bay gets fan units with radiators and fuel tanks. Different styles of exhaust are given, including flame dampening units. The engine deck has optional covers, vents, and open and closed louvers for the intakes. Other optional parts cover vehicles with engine heaters. In the fighting compartment, photo etched brass provides much of the floor structure around the suspension. Over that sits radio and other equipment, including racks for ammunition, plenty of rounds to fill those racks, seats for the driver and bow machine gunner, transmission, controls, and brakes. 
fine parts show impressive detail. The turret is comprehensive with a one-piece gun barrel, capped with a multi-part muzzle brake, and completed by a breech that sandwiches an optional recoil spring. A solid plastic insert is also provided. The interior of the mantlet captures the main gun, coaxial machine gun, and gun sight. Optional mantlets are also included. All of that attaches to a turret basket with machinery on the floor, ventilators, seats, and more. The second photo etch fret provides engine screens, breech details, seat back springs, and more small things. Decals and color diagrams give markings for three Panthers in a variety of camouflage schemes. The bulk of the decals are stencils for the cannon rounds. A separate set of instructions guides interior painting. There's a lot here and it remains to be seen how it all goes together. But at first look, it's an impressive kit. Next from Hasegawa, a 1700 scale Kaga. This is Zuma class escort destroyer and helicopter carrier of the Japanese Maritime Self-Defense Force was commissioned on March 22nd, 2017. Designed to operate with seven anti-submarine and two search and rescue helicopters, it can host as many as 28 aircraft and may be used with the F-35B. This limited edition kit includes parts to build a full hull model. In addition to the single lower hull molded in red, the sprue provides a separate bulbous bow, bilge keels, rudders, drive shafts, props, and stand supports. The last fit into a wooden base for sharp display. The upper hull is divided in half with hull plates, hatches, and a few portholes molded on. Add-on decks feature rafts, ladders, and braces underneath. Sturdy brackets support the hull. The flight deck has molded tie-downs, hatches, rafts, and openings for the elevators. The ship's boats show internal structure and seats. The midship elevator pretty much has to be attached flush with the deck. There's no hangar detail, but the side elevator can be posed up or down. The Long Island comes in several blocky sections with vents, windows, and hatches molded on the walls. Fine parts, such as antennas, finish the ship. You can fill the flight deck with two SH-60K Seahawk anti-sub helicopters and two MCH-101 choppers. All can be posed ready for flight or with the rotors and tails folded. The same can be done with a pair of MV-22 Osprey tilt rotor aircraft. The same sprue provides a bunch of trucks and other ground vehicles. To round out the air wing, the kit provides four F-35B VTOL jets. Two show the aircraft in landing or takeoff mode with the dorsal intakes open and the tails drooped. The decals provide flight deck stripes, bridge windows, hull numbers, the boot stripe, and markings for the aircraft, including canopies. This is another nice small-scale ship that would look at home next to a WASP-class LHD on the display shelf. Those legs are way too thick and short. Swipe left. Those guns are a bit small. Oh, the rear end is all wrong. Body looks to be the right shape. Nice guns. And the age is correct. Swipe right. You are a match. Introducing Fender the app that hooks you up with model kits in your area. Using a patented algorithm developed from years of monitoring online searches, Fender finds matches based on a 357 question form required for registration. Fender won't prevent your stash from growing, nor will it judge you if you swipe right on the same kit with different decals. And the Fender app will alert you if you try to match with a kit with which you've previously had a bad experience. Shouldn't it be pronounced Finder? Nope. It's Fender. But it's spelled... Shh. Go buy a kit. Fender. Coming to mobile devices as soon as we work out the bugs. In the meantime, swipe right on Fine Scale Modeler. Subscribe to the magazine that hooks you up with the hottest kits. You a match! Finally, from Squadron Products, we have these handy display bases that will quickly put aircraft models into context. These moments in time bases cover two time periods and come in three scales, 172nd, 148th, and 132nd scale. First is a World War I airfield display. Sized to fit a typical single or two-seat fighter, the base features wood planking partially covered by dirt. The strip runs diagonally across the base. The other corners have debris typical of the period. On the 172nd scale version, there are chopped trees, rocks, scrap lumber, and aircraft parts. Its 148th scale counterpart has a prop, wheel, scrap lumber, and even a shell hole. And the 132nd scale version features scraps, a prop, rocks, and a radiator. Moving forward in time, the other base options are lined with Marston mat, or PSP. The material was used widely on airfields in World War II and Korea. There are two sizes in 148 scale. The largest is 13 and a half inches square. 
Just as with the World War I base, the corners have details. In this case, oil drums, a crate, and spare matting. The smaller is 10 by 11 and has less debris. And the 132nd scale base has minimal corner detail, mostly a little groundwork and a log. Cleanly cast and ready to paint, these bases could be used as they are. Or they could be modified with extra details and groundwork. They provide a quick solution to improve the presentation of your aircraft models. To make things even easier, Squadron packages Vallejo sets to paint each style. Look for reviews of the Sea Fury and Panther in upcoming issues of Fine Scale Modeler magazine. And you can see more new products in the March issue on sale now. Thanks for visiting FineScale.com. While you're here, head on over to the Combat Hobby Store where you can pick up all your hobby tool needs, including this fine set of tweezers, perfect for handling small parts and PE. In the meantime, I'm Elizabeth Nash. And I'm Aaron Skinner, and I approve this message. Separate bulbous bow. Wow. <laughs> Good job. <laughs> <clears throat> That's what my Tinder display says. <laughs> <laughs>